Someone who knows the Trump legal team well, Laura, we have said, you know, 19 people have been indicted in this case, including the ones that you see here. Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, his former chief of staff at the White House, Mark Meadows, John Eastman, Kenneth Cheeseborough, Jeffrey Clark, Trump campaign attorney, Jenna Ellis, and Sidney Powell. We have a lot more on the stakes that Donald Trump and those names mentioned there and the others who were indicted tonight in Georgia. We are joined now by senior contributor and former Nixon White House counsel, John Dean, I mean, John, just on first thought, looking at this 98-page indictment, what went through your head? I, my first reaction was she didn't just charge him. She threw the book at him. Uh, it's a very, very impressive document. I've only made it through a little bit of it, scanned a lot of it. And the very problem you're just raising, Caitlin, is the people you named are both federally charged and they're being charged in Georgia as well. That's the sort of thing during Watergate that was worked out in advance. So I think I understand why Fawny did not want to address whether she would talked to Jack Smith or not, because I think they're in conversation right now because they are stepping on each other's toes. And what could that mean for this? I mean, there was a reason Sarah Murray asked that question, because it has raised uh, the prospect here of what these two simultaneous cases and trials could look like. I mean, we've seen how quickly Jack Smith is trying to move. It's a judge there that moves very quickly as well. And you heard the district attorney in Georgia tonight in Fulton County saying she wants to see a trial date within, they're going to request one within six months. Well, what it could mean, for example, is Mark Meadows is not, not really named as an individual other than his chief of staff position in the federal indictment. It appears in that indictment that he's a cooperating witness, that he's going to assist. If he's being charged in Georgia, that might cause some reluctance or certainly taint his testimony as to what he'd be willing to testify to in the federal case. That's the sort of thing I think they have to work out. Uh, and I'm surprised it did not get worked out. You heard David Schoen there. I mean, he, he's someone who he represented Trump at one of his impeachment trials. I mean, he knows the Trump legal world. He said he predicts that some of these 18 others that are listed underneath Donald John Trump are, are going to flip. Is that something that you think the former president should be worried about tonight as well? I think he should be very worried about it. And I suspect a Georgia judge will step in quickly and let them know that uh, they're not going to tolerate it. I'm sure the prosecutor is very aware of Trump's behavior. His effort to intimidate witnesses is well known now. So, uh, yes, it is very likely some will flip. And they just wanted to see the indictment. And they've seen it now. And it's not pretty. You worked, I mean, you were obviously the White House counsel in the Dixon administration. The White House counsel's office, as it stands now, is not that far from the chief of staff's office. Mark Meadows, with the exception of the former president, is the highest ranking White House official to be charged here, listed in this indictment. I think he's like the fifth or sixth person listed. I mean, what do you make of the fact that a former White House chief of staff has been indicted on state charges of racketeering in this, you know, enterprise, Fonnie Willis says, to overturn the election? Well, he, he didn't learn much from history because he's not the first chief of staff to be indicted, obviously. H.R. Uh, Haldeman, who is sort of the model still today of how a chief of staff can effectively operate. But Meadows, uh, you know, he was overwhelmed by his, his boss, the president. And it appears, I think he's cooperating. That's my read. And so I think he'll probably find a solution to get out of the Georgia case, too. You see echoes of Watergate in this, or is it is it bigger than that? How do you see it? Uh, it it's much bigger than Watergate, Caitlin. Uh, it, it's of a whole different dimension. Uh, it goes to the very foundation of democracy. Nixon abused some powers. He uh, exceeded his authority when he shouldn't, but he wasn't taking on the basics of the country. Whereas Trump wanted to stay in office, he wanted to use Georgia and abuse Georgia to, as part of that plan. And so this is very different and much more serious and much more troubling. John Dean, thank you for joining us tonight.